Good evening and welcome to Seeds of Victory. I'm Pastor Kelly Cross, where we're giving you the seed of the Word of God that builds your faith, which is the victory that overcomes the world. Let's open with prayer tonight. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your words are spirit and their life, Lord. I pray that as we study the word of God tonight, that hearts would be open and, and receptive to what your spirit would have to say. Lord, I thank you for touching people's lives through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've been talking about, is the Bible anti-gay? And we've covered the clobber passages, which uh, refer to the passages that are used to, to clobber uh, gay folks over the head um, and tell them not, they can't be right with God unless they change. Um, I think we've been really clear on what the Bible is against, and that's idolatry, uh, as well as many other things like stealing and lying, but, but nowhere does the Bible condemn a loving gay relationship. Um, tonight we're going to go into some passages uh, that I believe are affirming for us as uh, the GLBT community. I'm going to start in the book of Matthew. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter 8, starting in verse 5. It says, Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who follow, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, no, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and west to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Now, we see that Jesus marveled at this centurion's great faith. And uh, just looking at this as is, you're thinking, okay, so what? So he healed this centurion's servant. Well, we've got to look at the original language, which is Greek for the New Testament. In the Greek language, the servant that is sick the centurion refers to him as his pais, P-A-I-S. And the servant he says that he tells to do it and he does it is the word doulos. Now doulos simply means slave or servant. Pais can have a few different meanings. It can mean a slave or servant. It can mean a son, which is your own child. Or it can mean a young, a, a male lover. And you know, through deducting the fact that he used two different words, that tells me he meant something different about this servant than his other servants. Um, I believe it meant male lover. And, and other things in this passage indicated to me that that's what he meant as well. His concern, his deep concern for this particular servant, um, so concerned that a Roman centurion, a you know, Roman centurion soldier who was an idolater probably, sought out this Jewish minister to speak and get his servant healed. Um, you know, that indicates to me that it wasn't just your everyday slave. It was someone very, very special to him. And, and the fact that he didn't use doulos for both. He used pais for this one which very commonly was, was used as a male lover. Um, and it was also very common practice in Rome that uh, a centurion would have sometimes a male lover. And uh, I believe just the context of the passage and, and the fact that he did use the two different words, the fact that he was a Roman seeking so wholeheartedly and so concerned about this particular servant. Uh, in, other gospel, in the other gospel telling the same story, uh, it has other people coming to Jesus on the centurion's behalf. And they use the word doulos for both, but they call this one entomos doulos, which means, you know, highly honored slave or special special slave. Uh, kind of like the gay community now, you know, uh, where instead of introducing your partner or your lover to someone, they'll say your special friend, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but Jesus didn't condemn him. He actually, he was like, wow, what great faith. I haven't seen this kind of faith in all of Israel. 
He didn't tell him to go and sin no more like he did the woman caught in adultery. Uh, he marveled at his faith and said he had not just faith but great faith. And uh, I think, you know, if anyone's honest looking at this, they would say, well, if he just meant he was, you know, another slave or even a slave that was, you know, a little important to him, it, it wouldn't have been a different word. He would have used doulos for both. Um, the Roman attitude towards just everyday slaves was not good. Uh, if they were sick, they a lot of times wouldn't even get them help. They'd just let them die. Um, one writer that was called the conscience of Rome um, referred to that sort of thing, that it's basically a slave was just worthless, just a piece of property, you know, like you throw out an old towel or something. Um, but uh, this is one passage I feel is, is an affirming, affirming passage for the gay community. Another one I want to look at, and I, I love this one. In Matthew chapter 19, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And in verse 3 of chapter 19, it says, The Pharisees also came to him, testing him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to, to divorce his wife for just any reason? And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let not man separate they said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce, to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality or fornication, and marries another, commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. But he said to them, All cannot accept this saying, but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born thus from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who are made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who make themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who is able to receive or accept it, let him accept it. Now it's very interesting to me that in the very same passage, that Jesus is talking about the the intention of, of a husband and wife marriage, he goes into another paradigm. He he talks about a, a sexual minority, the eunuch. And he says there's three types of eunuchs. There are those who are born eunuchs. I believe that is the GLBT community. That that we're we're different. Um, there are those who are made eunuchs by others. That would be castrated males. And then there are those who make themselves a eunuch for the kingdom of God. Now I believe that's the ultimate for us natural born eunuchs, to make ourselves a eunuch for the kingdom of God as well. Which means that we, we're different than the male-female uh, marriage paradigm. That we, 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 we don't get married and have children and produce and have big families that, that are a distraction from doing the full work of the gospel. Um, now some of us have come out of marriages and have children, but in general, a gay you know we know a gay relationship does not produce children, so um, they don't generally have big huge families and and can do more for the kingdom of God because of that. Um, and if you are a natural born eunuch that has dedicated yourself as a eunuch for the kingdom of God, giving your life to the Lord, um, you know you're, you're dedicated to God. You do what He's called you to do, and and. Natural born eunuch, I want to kind of focus on that tonight, or, or those who were born eunuchs from their mother's womb. Now that doesn't mean that, that someone was born without, you know, their male parts, that they were castrated. No, natural born eunuchs, if you study history, um, many of the early church fathers talked about natural born eunuchs. And if you listen to their descriptions of these eunuchs, um, you would picture what we would consider a, 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 an effeminate or feminine gay man. Uh, just you know the, the way they describe them. Now I've got an interesting reading. If you read from the apocryphal readings, uh, which is the part of the Bible that that the Catholics have in there, but the Protestants don't, um, it's very interesting. There's a book called Sirach, and uh, Sirach, I believe, was the son of a scribe or, or a scribe himself. And he, he wrote a book in the Apocrypha, 
And a couple of his expressions that talk about Unix, it, it shows you it's referring to the eunuch just not having a natural desire for a woman. And, and it's talking about a male eunuch. There were also female eunuchs referred to in history uh, that didn't have a natural attraction for men. Um, in, in Sirach chapter 20 verse 4, it says, Like a eunuch lusting to violate a girl is the person who does right under compulsion. Um, you know, so we know that's not just talking about a castrated male because there, there were castrated males who, who still had a desire for the opposite sex and even some who could still you know, have sexual relations with the opposite sex. Um, and then if you look at Sirach, in chapter 30, in verse 20, it says, So is the one punished by the Lord. He sees with his eyes and groans, as a eunuch groans when embracing a girl. <laughs> Obviously, this, you know, he's saying these eunuchs wouldn't have any desire to embrace a girl. If they were embracing a girl, they'd be like, oh, just like someone who's being punished by the Lord. Uh, I think that's you know, a real clear indicator that, that Sirach was not talking about in either of those passages um, someone who's just been a castrated male. Uh, he's referring to people who don't have a natural desire for the opposite sex. And we, we talked about how when the Bible talks about against nature, it's talking about something intrinsically natural to you. Uh, so to these eunuchs, it wasn't natural to them to be attracted to the opposite sex. A eunuch was not naturally desirous to embrace a girl. He would groan. Um, he wouldn't lust after a woman. You know, it's the same as doing something under compulsion or being, something you're being forced to do. And unfortunately, because of the church's stance, many gay and lesbian, bisexual, transgender, children of God, um, don't do anything about who they are. They just find someone of the opposite sex, get married, and, and try to be quote-unquote normal and fit in so that they can serve God. And uh, they're totally going against their nature. And uh, if, if that's you tonight, I pray that, that you would just embrace who God made you to be. He knew that there were going to be some of us that he, he would make different than the rest. We're natural-born eunuchs. I believe that's talking about the GLBT community. That, that we are different than, than some of the others. But that's okay. You know, we can make ourselves eunuchs for the kingdom of God to accomplish God's purposes. Um, there's a scripture in Isaiah that says, The eunuch who keeps the covenant of God will have a name greater than sons and daughters. And if you study throughout the scriptures, I mean, these, these little sessions are not by any means comprehensive studies. And I, I, pr I pray that I'm just giving you enough seed to, to where you want to dig and study. Um, there's lots of books to study on this subject. Um, uh, my friend, uh, Pastor Sandra Turnbull, has just written a wonderful book called God's Gay Agenda. You can get it on Amazon. Um, there's a book called The Children Are Free by Jeff uh, Miner and Tyler Conley. Um, there's just many different ones that you can study. Uh, and they go into the original culture. They go into the Greek, into the Hebrew. Um, and, and you get some of the answers. And and most importantly, ask the Lord. Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. That's what I did. I got to a point in my life where I said, Lord, I just need to know. I, I just need to know from you. I don't want to hear what this group has to say or this group. I need to hear from you. And as I began to study, God began to show me. I want to leave you with just a couple passages. Um, in the book of John, when Jesus is speaking of the coming of the Holy Ghost, he says to them, I'm talking to you about the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. Now that's telling me when he's talking about the world, he's talking about unbelievers. They cannot receive the Holy Spirit, because they don't see him or know him. And I remember when my wife was at a conference and asked God to fill her with the Holy Spirit, and she began to speak in other tongues and just worship the Lord, that very night as I was reading the scriptures, the Lord had me in the book of John. And that scripture came and it said, The world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Well, if someone receives the Holy Spirit, then they're obviously not a part of the world. They're a believer. And she received the Holy Spirit with the evidence. Just like in the book of Acts, 
when Cornelius and his household began to speak in other tongues, Peter and the group with him said, they've got the same Holy Spirit we've got. How can we deny them water baptism? And I just pray that the church as a whole would get a hold of this when they see that we have the same Holy Spirit that they have, that they would be just as smart as Peter and say, wow, what God, God has called clean, I cannot call unclean. And that's in Acts 28 if you want to read it. He says, God showed me that I should not call anyone unclean. And, uh, you know, I just I pray that the church would get a hold of this. And I've had people say, well, you know, yes, you speak in tongues, but the devil could give you that. And the Lord gave me a scripture for that too. Jesus was talking and, and he says, if you, being evil, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And before that he says, if your child asks for a piece of bread, are you going to give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, are you going to give him a serpent? Your Father, when you ask for the Holy Spirit, that's what you're going to get. And I know that my wife, as well as many other gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people, are asking Jesus to fill them with the Holy Spirit. They're saying, Heavenly Father, fill me with the Spirit of God. And when they ask Him for the Holy Spirit, He's not going to give them something of the devil. They ask for a fish, they're not going to get a serpent. The serpent always represents the enemy. So, know that God loves you, no matter who you are. And all you have to do is call on Him and He'll save you. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and confess Him as Lord, you will be saved. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent means change your mind, change your direction. Ask Him to wash you clean of all your sins. Take over your life as Lord and Savior. Receive Him into your heart. He loves you today. And I pray that, that these teachings have helped you. If you have any other questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Just contact me. You can contact me through uh, Facebook or, or even our, our church. Uh, we have a website, www.mcnchurch.org. Uh, you can get a message to me that way. Uh, if you're in the Columbus area, we'd love to have you come visit Master's Commission New Covenant Church. Uh, we're at 2375 Refugee Park, Columbus, Ohio, 43207. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. If you need healing, just receive healing right now from the Lord in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Amen.